Good evening. Today we'll be looking into the text of John 14. We'll be looking at verses 15 through the end of the chapter. To give you a bit of background, this is the last night that Jesus is with the disciples before his arrest. It's quite important information that he's giving to the disciples because he's trying to prepare them for his departure. And our Lord is trying to give them hope to build their faith. And it's so wonderful that we can hear the words of Jesus today and get the same hope. Now it's important while we examine the scripture that we look to who he's talking to. At some points in the text he's talking to the disciples. And at other points in the text, he's talking to whoever. So we should be very careful to examine exactly who he's speaking to so we can make the proper application. I have to tell you that the Gospel of John is one of my favorite books. Because we are allowed the insight of, of the deity of, of the Godhead. Many times we see in the Gospels, the Synoptic Gospels, that Jesus wakes up early and goes and prays by himself. And when he's by himself praying, we don't know what he's talking with the Father about. But starting here in these chapters in 14 and following, 15, 16, He's talking with the Father directly. And we are blessed to be uh, hearers of that conversation. So if you have your Bibles with you, turn to chapter 14 and we'll start reading at 15 and following. Remember now, we're going to pay particular attention to who Jesus is addressing. Starting in verse 15, If you love me, keep my commandments. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to help you and be with you forever. Do you see that in there? He's, he said another, in verse 16, another advocate. So we have one advocate already. And we're going to get another one. Another advocate. So what does it mean by advocate? Well, the Greek word for this is Holy Spirit, meaning uh, paraclete. And it's interesting, our modern day translations give different words for this uh, word paraclete. Uh, some translations say the word helper. 
Some say counselor. Uh, the, tra uh, the translation we read out of uh, the NIV gives uh, uh, advocate. And yet another one gives comforter. But these English words don't really give the, the, the word justice. Let's take a word, uh, look at the word helper. A helper is one to be an assistant and, and uh, complete the task that needs to be done. But in no way is this subordinate. This is a helper to accomplish the Father's will. And another word, counselor. Some of the young people may think this is like the school counselor. It may be a little part of that, but it's, it's not completely accurate. And the word advocate may have a legal connotation to it. But it really has nothing to do with the, uh, the legal aspect of the law. And, and finally, we have one of the words comforter. Which is a good word, but it doesn't tell the whole story again. I think if we took all these words and mixed them together, I think we'd be getting to a closer definition. But in the end, we have one deity who said we'll receive another advocate, which is another deity. And it's called the Spirit of Truth in this text. So let's continue reading and we'll develop this more. Verse 17. The Spirit of Truth, the world cannot accept Him because it neither sees Him nor knows Him. But if you know Him, but you know Him, for He lives with you and He will be with you. So if you're looking at your scripture, let's look exactly at those final words in verse 17. But you know him, for he lives with you. And will be with you. So we have a present tense. And we have a future tense. So I really don't know what he means here by that the Spirit is with them now. But he's telling them that. And we know that in the future that the Spirit will be with them as we see in the book of Acts. Can you imagine if Jesus had went to the cross and did not have this conversation with them?
How would they feel? How would we feel today if he didn't leave us a message? But Jesus knew that they would be fearful. He knew their faith would be tested. And he says, as he says in verse 18, I will not leave you orphans, I will come to you. Our Lord is not going to leave his disciples without hope. He's going to tell them what they need to know to prepare themselves. Now he knows they're not going to remember all of this. That's why he told them he would give them another advocate to help them. And as we see from the text, it's both now and in the future, the, the, the present and the future. So let's continue in verse 19. Before long, the world will not see me anymore. But you will see me because I live. You will also live, and on that day you will realize that I am in the Father, and you are in me, and I am in you. Now let's keep our ears open for verse 21 to, to hear what we need to hear that may pertain to us today. And in verse 21, whoever has my commandments and keeps them is the one who loves me. The one who loves me will be loved by my father, and I too will love them and show myself to them. So we see in verse 21, he's talking to whoever. Sometimes we don't know who Jesus is talking to at the time. Sometimes he's talking to his disciples and sometimes he's talking to the people around him. But we know for sure that when he uses the word whoever, that that's going to apply to us today. Everyone here is quite familiar with John 3.16. For God so loved the world that whoever so, so you know it well. So every time we hear this word whoever, we know that it applies to us today. Okay, in verse 22, Then Judas, not Judas Iscariot, said, But Lord, why do you intend to show yourself to us and not to the world? Once again, Jesus is trying to prepare the disciples because he is leaving. And you have to remember what the disciples are thinking. They've been with him almost three years every day. And I'm sure they're thinking he's just going on a trip and he'll come back again. But 
but that's not the case. The, the Lord is going away and, and only a select few will see him again. And Judas here, Judas Iscariot, uh, not Judas Iscariot, is asking them, uh, why isn't the world going to see you? Once again, they don't fully grasp that he's going to the cross. And as we see from the scriptures, once he uh, is uh, resurrected from the cross, only a few will see him. First Corinthians 15 tells us that 500 disciples see him. And Paul writes uh, the disciples, the apostles see him as well as Paul being the last one to see him. So Jesus knows when he returns that not very few are going to see him, definitely not the world. So he's trying to prepare the disciples for this event. And we'll continue reading in verse 23. Jesus replied, Anyone who loves me will obey my teaching. My Father will love them, and we will come and make our home with them. Anyone who does not love me will not obey my teaching. These words you hear are not my own. They belong to the Father who sent me. <laughs> Bless you. So Jesus is trying to prepare them that he's going to make a home with them. And our ears should perk up again because he said the word anyone. In, ver in verse 23, he, he said, Anyone who loves me will obey my teaching. So we know if we obey the, the words of our Lord, we have a promise of a home. Now when are we going to get that home? Do we have to wait until the, the return of the Lord? Or can we get that home today? Yes and yes. I think you remember back in the Garden of Eden, the, the text in Genesis tells us that God came in the evening, cool of the evening. And he, he walked in the garden and talked with Adam and Eve. So we know at that time that God made a home with them. And then we know that sin entered the world. And Adam and Eve were asked to leave the garden. They no longer had a home with God. And we see with Moses, God worked with Moses. And God was very restrictive in who had contact with the Father. The people didn't have a home with God at that time. 
Then we know about the tabernacle system and the temple. And then we know about the tabernacle system and the temple. And then we know about the tabernacle system and the temple. There was a special place set up for God. And the people didn't have a home with God because they only were allowed to access God through a priest. But the Hebrew writers tells us that Jesus tore the curtain down. And it's through his sacrifice now that we can make a home with God once again. And let's take a look at what Paul wrote the Corinthians in 2 Corinthians 16, verse 16 and 18. 2 Corinthians 6, verse 16. I'll read it through 16 through the end of the chapter. This is what Paul wrote to the Corinthians. I'll read it first and then go through. Or what agreement has the temple of God with idols? For we, uh, for we, we are the temple of the living God, just as God said, I will dwell with them and walk among them. And I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Therefore, come out to the midst and be separated, says the Lord. And do not touch what is unclean. And I will welcome you, and I will be the father to you. And you will be the sons and daughters to me, says the Lord Almighty. <laughs> เราจะเป็นพระเจ้าของเขาและเขาจะเป็นชนชาติของเราพระเจ้าตรัสว่าเหตุฉะนั้นเจ้าจงออกจากหมู่พวกเขาเหล่านั้นจงแยกตัวออกจากเขาทั้งหลายอย่าแตะต้องสิ่งซึ่งไม่สะอาดและเราจึงจะรับพวกเจ้าทั้งหลายเจ้าจะเป็นดั่งบิดาของเราจะเป็นดั่งบิดาของพวกเจ้าและพวกเจ้าจะเป็นบุตรชายบุตรหญิงของเราพระเจ้าผู้ทรงฤทธานุภาพทั้งสิ้นได้ตรัสดังนั้น So here, Paul is talking to the Corinthians about how to avoid idols. He warns them not to have a relationship with them. Because we are the temple of the living God. And the reason why we have this relationship with God is because of Jesus Christ and His death. So we know that we have a hope of a home with God today. So let's continue our text in John in verse 25. All of this I have spoken with you still while I'm still with you. But the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and remind you of everything that I have said to you. เราได้กล่าวคำเหล่านี้แก่ท่านทั้งหลายเมื่อเรายังอยู่กับท่านแต่องค์ผู้ช่วยคือพระวิญญาณบริสุทธิ์ซึ่งพระบิดาจะทรงใช้มาในนามของเรานั้นจะทรงสอนท่านทั้งหลายทุกสิ่งและจะทําให้ท่านระลึกถึงทุกสิ่งที่เราได้กล่าวไว้แก่ท่าน27 Peace I leave with you my peace I give you I do not give it as the world gives do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid ยี่สิบเจ็ดครับเรามอบสันสุขไว้กับให้ให้แก่ท่านทั้งหลายสันติสุขของเราที่ให้แก่ท่านนั้นเราให้ท่านไม่เหมือนโลกให้อยากให้อย่าให้ใจของท่านวิตกอยากกลัวเลย He's trying to prepare the disciples not to lose their faith พงนั้นได้เตรียมความเชื่อเตรียมความพร้อมให้บรรดาอากาศวบอย่า
พยายามเตือนพวกเขาอยากให้ทิ้งความเชื่อให้มีความเชื่อในพระองค์ He's trying to give them encouragement พระองค์หนุนนั่นใจพวกเขาอยากให้ตกกังวล It's the same that we can do today by reading His words and gaining faith and gaining encouragement เหมือนกันพี่น้องครับเมื่อไหร่ก็ตามที่เราทั้งหลายวิตกกังวลเมื่อไหร่ที่เราทั้งหลายกลัวนั้นการอ่านการอ่านพระคำของพระเจ้าการเปิดพระคำของเจ้าและอ่านเหมือนกันเราจะได้ยินคำพูดคำเดียวกันสิ่งที่พระเจ้าได้ตรัสกับสาวกก็จะเข้ามาสู่ใจของเราทั้งหลาย Because we know our Lord is returning one day to come and get us เพราะว่าเรารู้แน่นอนพระสัญญาของพระเจ้าได้บอกชัดเจนว่าพระองค์จะเสด็จกลับมารับเราทั้งหลาย And He promises that as we read in verse 28และพระองค์ได้สัญญาไว้ในข้อที่28นะครับถ้าเราจะอ่านต่อไป You heard me say, "I am going away, and I'm coming back to you." If you love me, you would be glad that I am going to the Father, for the Father is greater than I. ท่านได้ยินเรากล่าวแก่ท่านว่าเราจะจากไปและจะกลับมาหาท่านแต่ท่านทั้งหลายรักเราท่านก็จะชื่นชมยินดีที่เราจะไปหาพระบิดาเพราะพระบิดาทรงเป็นใหญ่กว่าเรา I have told you this now before it happens, so that when it does happen, you will believe. เราและวันนี้เราได้บอกท่านทั้งหลายก่อนที่เหตุการณ์นั้นจะเกิดขึ้นเพราะว่าเมื่อเหตุการณ์นั้นเกิดขึ้นแล้วท่านทั้งหลายจะได้เชื่อ Now he's coming to the 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 good part that we can really take hope again in today. อีกครั้งหนึ่งนะครับตอนนี้ช่วยทําให้เรามีความหวังมีความเชื่อและมีความไว้วางใจเพราะพระองค์ได้พูดชัดเจนว่ายังไงครับ In verse 30. I will not say much more to you, for the prince of this world is coming. He has no hold over me, but he comes so that the world may learn that I love the Father and do exactly what the Father has commanded to me. แต่นี้ไปเราจะไม่สนทนากับท่านทั้งหลายนานเช่นนี้อีกเพราะว่าเจ้าโลกจะมาผู้นั้นไม่มีสิทธิอำนาจอะไรเหนือเราแต่เราจะทำตามพระบิดาผู้ได้บัญชาเราเพราะโลกจะได้รู้ว่าเรารับบิดา We know from verse 30, uh, he's talking about the prince of this world. Satan is coming. And he has no hold over him, as some uh, translations say, he has no claim over him. And we know from the previous chapter that uh, the disciples were asking Jesus, who is going to betray him? And Jesus said, "I will dip the bread in the sauce and give it to him. This is the one." So we know that Jesus dipped the bread. And gave it to Judas Iscariot. We know that Jesus dipped the bread and gave it to Judas Iscariot. We know that Jesus dipped the bread and gave it to Judas Iscariot. We know that Jesus dipped the bread and gave it to Judas Iscariot. We know that Jesus dipped the bread and gave it to Judas Iscariot. We know that Jesus dipped the bread and gave it to Judas Iscariot. We know that Jesus dipped the bread and gave it to Judas Iscariot. We know that Jesus dipped the bread and gave it to Judas Iscariot. We know that Jesus dipped the bread and gave it to Judas Iscariot. We know that Jesus dipped the bread and gave it to Judas Iscariot. We know that Jesus dipped the bread and gave it to Judas Iscariot. We know that Jesus dipped the bread and gave it to Judas Iscariot. We know that Jesus dipped the bread and gave it to Judas Iscariot. We know that Jesus dipped the bread and gave it to Judas Iscariot. We know that Jesus dipped the bread and gave it to Judas Iscariot. We know that Jesus dipped the bread and gave it to Judas Iscariot. We know that Jesus dipped the bread and gave it to Judas Iscariot. We know that Jesus dipped the bread and gave it to Judas Iscariot. We know that Jesus dipped the bread and gave it to Judas Iscariot. We know that Jesus dipped the bread and gave it to Judas Iscariot. We know that Jesus dipped the bread and gave it to Judas Iscariot. But we know that the Lord has overcome this world. We know that He overcame the world because He was sinless. And in His sinlessness, He did the will of the Father. พระทัยของพระบิดาไม่ใช่ตามหัวใจของพระองค์เอง And in this sinlessness, he saved the world. การไม่มีบาปของพระองค์นั้นทําให้พระองค์สามารถที่จะกอบกู้ช่วยโลกทั้งโลกที่เต็มไปด้วยความบาปได้ And this is how we have a home with the Father. และนี่คือสาเหตุที่เราจะกลับไปมีบ้านอยู่บ้านเดียวกันกับพระเจ้า Because if we do the will of the Father, เพราะว่าถ้าเราทําตามพระทัยพระบิดา He and Jesus will come and make a home with us. And we know from the scriptures here that we just read that Jesus has gone away to prepare that place for us. But don't lose hope for today because we still have a home with Him as God dwells with us today. ดังนั้นเองเราก็อย่าหมดหวังพี่น้องครับเพราะว่าเราก็ยังมีบ้านกับพระองค์ได้ในทุกๆวันแห่งชีวิตที่เราดำเนินอยู่กับพระองค์ So 
in the end, I would like to tell you that sometimes we, we are very disappointed in our life and we are very lonely and, and we don't know where to turn to at times. But we should never fear because our Lord told us that He overcame the world. And from reading the scripture, we, we know we, we not only have one advocate, but we have two advocates. So we should never have little faith. When we start to get uh, sorrowful and lonely, we should, we should remember that we have our Lord coming back for us. Because He promised it. Thank you.